Baxter takes great pride in presenting the Screen Guild players in one of the great classics of the screen, Wuthering Heights, with Meryl Oberon in her original role as Kathy, Cornell Wilde as Heathcliff, and Reed Hadley as Edgar. The Lady Esther Screen Guild players in Wuthering Heights. A hundred years ago, on the barren Yorkshire moors in England, stood a house as bleak and desolate as the wastes around it. Wuthering Heights, it was called. A forbidding place. And the country folk whispered that it was haunted. But only one man knew the truth. One man. Old Edgar Linton, who lived at the Grange. Yes. Sometimes when the wind is from the moors, a voice goes sighing through the house. And another sighing voice that replies. Darling, I'll always love you. Always. Always. It's a strange tale. It goes back so far. Almost 40 years. Almost to the very first moment they met. Kathy was very young then, only a child, when her father, the master of Wuthering Heights, returned from a business trip to Liverpool and brought with him a young boy. I found him starving on the docks, kicked and bruised and almost dead. <laughs> I couldn't find anyone willing to claim him, so I thought I'd better bring him home. Shall you like that, Kathy? Oh, yes, Father, yes. And you, Hindley, will you be as kind as your sister... Well, my boy? He's dirty. That's how it was from the very start. Hindley hated the stranger. Kathy adored him. There was a wildness in the lad, a rebelliousness that was like her own. And the gypsy boy seemed to sense it, too. Only Kathy could put him at his ease. Only Kathy could make him smile. Heathcliff, you know what I think. You're a prince in disguise. Uh, I am? Yes. Your father was emperor of China. And your mother was an Indian queen. You were kidnapped by wicked sailors and brought to England. So you see, you're a prince. Oh, but Kathy, all the princes I've ever read about had castles. Of course. You have one, too. Right here. Right here? You mean Pennystone Crag? Heathcliff, you've got to imagine things. Oh, but this is just a rock. You can't see that this is a castle... You'll simply never be a prince. Well, if you're so sure... I'm positive. Very well, then. I'll be a prince. And you... What, my lord? Kathy, you will be my queen. That was the dream they built on Pinnestone Crag. And as they grew, it grew with them. Until the day it was almost destroyed. They were in the small drawing room downstairs. Hindley was with them, and the three of them sat there without a word. The three of them, waiting. There's Ellen now. Ellen? Ellen, what does the doctor say? How is he, Ellen? Kathy, darling. Well, speak up. How is my father? Master Hindley, you're to send for the vicar. He's dead. He's dead. Kathy, my dear <laughs> wild little Kathy. Don't cry, Kathy. Come, I'll take you to him. Not you, Heathcliff. You're not wanted up there. Hindley! He'll go to the stable, where he belongs. But I only meant... You'll do as you're told. I'm master here now. Kathy. Kathy. Heathcliff, is that you? I knew you'd be here. I'll always be here at our castle, darling. I came as soon as I could. Did Hindley see which way you came? What if he did? He scarcely needs a reason to torment me. I know. I know how bad it's been for you almost two years now. To beat and abuse me. That's all he seems to live for. For that and his bottle. 
He's been drinking so much. Let him. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters down there. Our life is here. Yes, my lord. Still, it would be dreadful if Hindley found out. Found out what? That you talk to me sometimes? I really shouldn't talk to you at all. Look at you. You get worse every day. Dirty and unkempt and in rags. Shall I dress like a prince in my lovely stable? Heathcliff, why don't you run away? Run away? From you? You could come back to me rich and take me away. Remember? We used to play, you would. Kathy. Yes? Come with me now. Where? Anywhere. And live in haystacks and steal our food? No, Heathcliff, that's not what I want. You just want to send me off. I don't. Well, it won't do. I've stayed here, taken all I have just to be near you. And I'll stay to the end. I'll live and die under this rock. I'll... Listen. Do you hear? What, that music? The Lintons are giving a party. That's what I want. Dancing and singing in a pretty world. And I'm going to have it. Come on, let's go and see. But, Kathy... Come on! Isn't it a wonderful party? Isn't it? Kathy, if they find us in their garden... Nonsense. Look. Look, there's the kind of dress I'll wear someday. Isn't it lovely? And you'll have a red velvet coat with silver buckles on your shoes. Oh, Heathcliff, will we? Will we ever? Come along. We'd better get out of here. Confound that dog. Hurry, will you? I'm coming. I... Oh! Kathy, what is it? My ankle. I'm afraid I twisted it. I... Heathcliff, the dog. Oh, let go of her, blast you. Let go, I said. Hold him, Skulker. Hold him. Heathcliff, my leg. You there, call off your dog, you fool. Down, Skulker, down. Oh, good work. My boy, good work. You'll pay for this, you and your cursed dog. You'll pay for this. What is it, father? <laughs> Enough noise out here to... It's Catherine Earnshaw. Oh, I'm dreadfully sorry. Here, let me help you. Hold on to my arm. Put her down. Put her down, do you hear? You idiot, she's hurt. Can't you see she's bleeding? Edgar, who is this fellow? The Earnshaw stable boy. Don't worry, Miss Catherine. We'll patch you up. My sister's an expert with a bandage. Just a minute. Where do you think you're taking her? Into the house. Are there any objections? Well, I... How long are you going to keep her there? Until she's well. Which may be longer than you'd care to wait. Good night. Yes, he disliked me enough for what happened that night. And even more for all that happened later. It was several weeks before we took her home. Weeks that I shall never forget. They were a sheer delight to me, and in all truth to Kathy, too. I knew that she liked me, my sister Isabella, our friends, the quiet comfort of our home. But as the time drew near for her to leave, I could detect in her a restlessness and eagerness that was tinged with fear. I think I know now why it was. Heathcliff, oh, you are here. I was hoping you would be. Here at our castle. Heathcliff, what's wrong? Aren't you glad to see me? Why did you stay so long in that house? That doesn't matter now. I'm back. Why did you stay so long? Why? Because I was having a wonderful time. A delightful, fascinating, wonderful time. With people who wash their hands and faces. And comb their hair and... Oh, Heathcliff. Forgive me. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Oh, Kathy. If you only knew how I've missed you. And I... I've missed you, too, even when I didn't know it. Oh, Heathcliff, make the world stop right here. Make everything stop and stand still and never move again. Make the moors never change, and you and I never change. The moors won't ever change. Don't you change, Kathy. I won't. I can't. No matter, no matter what I ever do or say, this is me now. Standing on this rock with you, this is me forever. No other world but this? No other world but you. This hill, the heather blooming all around us. Oh, Kathy. Kathy, darling, you're still my queen. Kathy, child, you're a puzzle to me. Am I? I always thought it was going to be Heathcliff. But these last few months with Mr. Edgar coming here so often. Am I pretty, Ellen? You're lovely. Lovely. And do you think Mr. Edgar will like my new dress? Of course. He'll think it more than worth the ride through this storm. 
I think that sometime soon he'll be asking my Kathy a serious question. Tonight, perhaps. No, yesterday. He's already asked you. I promised I'd give him my answer tonight. What will it be? Do you love him, Kathy? Yes. Why? Why? That's a silly question, isn't it? Not so silly. Why do you love him? Because he's handsome and he's pleasant to be with and, and kind. That's not enough. Well, well, someday he'll be rich and I'll be the finest lady in the county. I'll give great parties and wear silk dresses every day of the week and I'll... Heathcliff, what are you doing in my room? How long have you been standing there? Long enough. I want to talk to you. Go outside, Ellen. I take me orders from Miss Catherine, not from stable boys. It's all right, Ellen. If you say so, Miss. And now, Heathcliff, may I know to what I owe this great honor? He's coming here again. And you're becoming unbearable again. That's not an answer. Is he coming here? Will you please understand I'm not a child anymore? You can't talk like that to me. I'm not talking to a child. I'm talking to Kathy. My Kathy. Oh, I'm your Kathy. Yes, yes, you are. A hundred times you've set so on the moors. Indeed. Well, my moods change indoors, and they don't include talking to a stable boy. Kathy, not you. Don't you talk like that. Go away. You had your chance to be something else. The thief or servant were all you wanted, or beggar beside the road, begging for favors, not earning them, but whimpering for them with your dirty hands. Well, that's all I've become to you. A pair of dirty hands. Well, have them, then. Have them both. Have them where they belong. Get out. Get out! I will, out of this house, out of this cursed country. Someplace I'll never see you or hear your voice or remember your face. I'll get out all right. I'll get out now. Heathcliff. Heathcliff, no! Ellen! Ellen! Kathy, good heavens, what is it, child? Ellen, he's going away. We've got oh, to stop Kathy. him. Miss Kathy, Miss Kathy, Heathcliff! Heathcliff! Heathcliff, come back! Come back, Heathcliff! Come back! Come back. Heathcliff. Come back. The second act of the Lady Esther Screen Guild play will follow in just a moment. Now, a word from Lady Esther. Reading about all the strikes in my morning newspaper gave me a thought for you. You know, it's possible your own skin may be on a strike too. Yes, those enlarged pore openings, those dry, flaky spots, those little marks and blemishes may all be signs that your skin is not satisfied with the daily care you give it. And so... Your skin has gone on strike. But all those signs of an unhappy skin will quickly disappear when you switch to Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream. For this one cream by itself does all the four things your skin needs most to look and feel its best. Now, I don't want you to accept that statement without proof. No, for I will prove the exciting difference Lady Esther Face Cream makes in your skin in just 30 seconds with a patch test. To make this interesting test, simply smooth Lady Esther face cream on one patch of skin, for instance, on one cheek. Wipe it off. Then compare that cheek with the other. See the radiant difference. Feel the difference with your fingertips. This 30-second patch test shows you how thoroughly Lady Esther face cream cleans your skin, how it softens your skin, how it helps nature refine the pores, and how it leaves a smooth, perfect base for powder. Remember, all I ask is that you let the patch test prove this. Let it prove that Lady Esther face cream does more for your skin than any face cream you have ever used. And now, the second act of Wuthering Heights, starring Reed Hadley, Merle Oberon, and Cornell Wilde. I've always felt 
there was some special fate that twisted Kathy's life with mine. That night, I arrived at Wuthering Heights just in time to join the search for her. And hours later, I found her near the great rock on Pennystone Crag, lying there in the storm, the life almost out of her. And so once again, I carried her home. And as I held her in my arms, her lips formed one word. Heathcliff. Heathcliff. It was like a farewell, as though she knew without asking that he was gone. And after that, never mention of him again. Not once through all the long days of her convalescence. Edgar, it's so wonderful here at the Grange. You and Isabella have been so nice to me. It's very easy to be nice to you. But I ought to be thinking about going home. I can't expect to stay here forever. Why not, Kathy? If I can make you happy. Darling, let me take care of you forever. Let me guard you and love you always. Would you love me always? I couldn't help myself. Kathy, if your... If your silence means yes... You know, I've... I've never even kissed you. Well, isn't it time? Oh, Kathy, Kathy, darling... No one will ever kiss me again but you. No one. I'll be your wife and be proud to be your wife. My dear. And I'll be good to you and love you truly. Always? Always. And so we were married. And the years passed quietly, happily, until that night. I remember it was just before dinner. Kathy and I were sitting together, talking. Edgar, I've been meaning to ask you, have you talked to Jeff Peters about the new wing? Yes, and I think we'd better go ahead and build. It looks as though it may be some time before we can marry Isabella off. She's <laughs> so particular. <laughs> Poor Isabella. I'm afraid I got the only prize in the county. Miss Kathy. Yes, Ellen? Miss Kathy, I, I'm sorry. Someone wishes to see you. <laughs> Ellen, what is it? You look as if you'd seen a ghost. I have. It's, it's Heathcliff. Heathcliff. Well, He's that's... Back. That's news. Where has he been? He said America, sir. He's so changed I hardly recognized him. Oh, he's quite the gentleman. Fine clothes, a horse. Ellen, he... don't stand there prattling. Go and tell him I don't wish to see him. Now, now, Kathy, we can't be as cruel as all that. He's come a long way. Show him in, Ellen. Yes, Master Edgar. Edgar. Yes? Don't... It's, it's chilly here. Nonsense, my dear. You mustn't be nervous. You mustn't fear a little ghost that's returned, a dead leaf blown about your feet, a phantom thought. I trust I'm not intruding. Well, Heathcliff. Mr. Linton. Hello, Kathy. Do come in, Heathcliff. Here, sit by the fire. Will you have a whiskey? No, thank you. I say, I've never seen such a change in a man. You seem to have prospered since our last meeting. Somewhat. Ellen said you'd been to America. Yes. I... We all wondered where you went. Kathy, do you like my new dress? It's the first time I... Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, uh, Heathcliff, you haven't met my sister, Miss Linton. Miss Linton? Now, tell us what brought about this amazing change. Did you discover a gold mine in the new world, or did you perhaps fall heir to a fortune? In a way, I remember that my father was an emperor of China, and my mother was an Indian queen. I simply collected my inheritance. Oh, that's delightful. And your humble servant, Miss Linton. Are you visiting here long? I mean, in the village? Yes, in the rest of my life. What? I've just bought Wuthering Heights. The house, the stock, and the moors. You mean Hindley sold you the estate? Precisely, though he's not aware of it yet. It may be somewhat of a surprise when he learns that his gambling debts and his liquor bills were paid by his former stable boy. Though I do believe the house and grounds are worth it. Well, I knew Hindley was in difficulty, of course, but... But if I'd known his property was being stolen by a stranger... May I correct you, sir? I'm neither thief nor stranger. Merely a good businessman who is now your neighbor. Now I'll say good night. Heathcliff, wait. If you wish to come here as our friend, then... Oh, yes. It occurs to me that I've not yet congratulated you on your marriage. Allow me now to express my delight over your happiness. Good night. Good riddance, I say. Really, Edgar, I think you behaved abominably. What? And you too, Kathy. I'm disappointed in you both. Isabella, the man's a rogue, a thief. Really? Well, I thought him very distinguished. Well, 
I should have known what would happen. I should have known what he would do. I wanted to talk to Isabella, reason with her, but Kathy said no, it was a woman's job. And so it was Kathy who went to her. Isabella, I want to talk to you. Yes, darling, about what? About Heathcliff. Oh, really, Kathy, I've no desire to discuss Heathcliff with you or anyone. I'm afraid you must. Isabella, you're behaving disgracefully. In what way, may I ask? You're making a spectacle of yourself with Heathcliff, throwing yourself at his head. I must ask you to be careful of what you say, you fool. You vain little fool. I'm going to tell you the truth. You're old enough. I'm going to open your eyes. My eyes are quite open, thank you. Isabella, don't you see what he's doing? He's using you to get near me, to try to rouse something in me that's dead. And I'll not have it. I'll not allow you to help him. Indeed. As it happens, you're the one who's vain and insufferable. Heathcliff's in love with me. That's a lie. It's not a lie. He told me so himself. He told you that? Told me that he loved me. Held me in his arms and kissed me. Begged me only to be his wife. His wife? Don't you understand? His wife. Heathcliff and I are going to be married. What brings you to Wuthering Heights, Kathy? Does Edgar know? I doubt that he'd approve. Heathcliff, is it true? Is what true? Is it true that you plan to marry Isabella? Is it? Heathcliff, you mustn't do it. She hasn't harmed you. You have. Then punish me. I'm going to. Each time I take her in my arms, each time I kiss, each time I promise her life and happiness. You can't, you can't. Don't make me a partner to such a crime. It's hideous, it's mad. It's already decided. After this, you can think of me as something else than Kathy's foolish and despairing lover. You can think of me as Isabella's husband for as long as you live. I couldn't stop the wedding. My sister was of age. But looking back now, I know that the day she and Heathcliff were married was the day that Kathy began to fail. The doctor was baffled from the start. There were no familiar symptoms that he could treat, no answer in all of his medical books. And yet, day by day, she grew slowly weaker, wasting away, until we both knew, without admitting it, that the end was near. That afternoon, I can see it yet. The air was so warm, the sky so blue. She looked at me and smiled and asked for Isabella. For Isabella. I think even then I knew what she meant. And so I sent word to Wuthering Heights. And when he came dashing madly into the house as I had expected, I, I did the only thing I could. I left them decently alone. Kathy, Kathy. I was dreaming you might come before I died. And, and you scowled at me once more. Don't talk that way. There, you see... Oh, Kathy, Kathy, darling, why didn't you let me know? Why didn't you send for me? You have Isabella. She's your wife. My wife. I've hated her. You've kissed her. Held her in your arms. And cursed myself and her. Oh, Kathy, Kathy. The smell of Heather in your hair. Darling. No tears. Don't break my heart. Oh, Kathy, I never broke your heart. You broke it yourself. Misery and death and all the evils that God or man could have hammered down would never have parted us. You did that alone, like a little greedy child, to break your heart and mine. Forgive me, Heathcliff. Forgive me. No. No, I'm the one should ask. I was born to beggary. Let me beg again now. Oh, no, darling. No. Oh, Kathy, Kathy, your hands. Your poor, wasted hands. Heathcliff, we've so little time. Kathy, don't talk. You need your strength. Darling. But I told you once, that night on the moors, it's true. It's always been true. Leave to find yours. I've never belonged to anyone else. What a pity. It's too late. It isn't. It's not too late. I'm here now, Kathy. I'll never leave you again. From the window there, you can see the crag. If I could see the moors once more with you, Heathcliff. Will you carry me? You can't die, Kathy. You can't. I won't let you die. Out there where our castle is, I'll wait for you, Heathcliff. I'll wait for you. 
till you come. She was still in his arms when I came in. Her eyes were closed and she was smiling softly, as if she were dreaming. We buried her on Penistone Crag, and within the month we buried Heathcliff too. We buried him where we found him, beside her grave, face down in the heather, dead, without a sign or mark on him to show the cause. Gone. They've both been gone a long time now. But sometimes when the wind is from the moors, a voice goes sighing through Wuthering Heights. Kathy, I love you. I love you, Kathy. And another sighing voice replies. Darling, I'll always love you. Always. Always. <laughs> Thank you, Cornell Wilde, Reed Hadley, and Merle Oberon for appearing with the Lady Esther Screen Guild players tonight. We are grateful indeed for your fine performances. We are glad to be here, Mr. Bradley. We look forward to our appearances with the Lady Esther Screen Guild players because we know that the benefits from these programs go to support the Motion Picture Relief Fund and the wonderful work being done at the Country House. And now, before we tell you about next week's program, here's a word from one of America's best-known beauty authorities, Lady Esther. Thank you, Miss Oberon. Ladies, let me read you something written by one woman who just started using my new powder shade, Bridal Pink. She says, Lady Esther, your new shade of powder is such fun to use. It's young, it's gay, it's even a little daring. Yes, I suppose it is a little daring. After all, it was deliberately planned to make a woman's face look more romantic. That's why I call it Bridal Pink, because it sort of lights up your face, gives it life and warmth, like the look of a bride on her wedding day. Yes, it really is fun to use bridal pink, and it takes the guesswork out of choosing a powder shade, too, for no matter whether your hair is blonde, black, auburn, or brown, bridal pink is intensely flattering, flattering to almost every skin it touches. Another thing, Lady Esther face powder is so fine in texture, it completely covers tiny lines and blemishes, and clings hour after hour, always fresh and lovely as though just applied. It's very easy to make this radiant transformation in your appearance. With a jar of Lady Esther four-purpose face cream and a box of Lady Esther bridal pink face powder, you're ready to present a new face to the world. Next week, the Lady Esther Screen Guild players will present Getting Gertie's Garter. It will star Lucille Ball, Sheila Ryan, Barry Sullivan, and Dennis O'Keefe. Be sure to listen. Merle Oberon will soon be seen in the Universal production, Night in Paradise. Cornell Wilde can now be seen in the Daryl F. Zanuck production, Leave Her to Heaven. Reed Hadley can soon be seen in Shock, both 20th Century Fox pictures. Wuthering Heights was presented through the courtesy of Samuel Goldwyn. Music on tonight's program was arranged by Wilbur Hatch and conducted by Led Gluskin. This is Truman Bradley, speaking for Lady Esther. Thank you, and good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.